How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the new Pixel 6 Pro. And you guys can tell by the smile on my face just how excited I am to share with you guys my honest thoughts and opinions on this device. Google is officially done. And by done, I mean they're done playing games. This year, they decided they want to compete. They want to be a top dog in the phone industry. And they mean business because for the first time ever, Google has engineered their very own chipset. Introducing Google Tensor, a custom-made chipset to rival Apple Silicon and Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. Quite honestly, the performance has been surprising along with other things like the cameras and the battery life. If you guys want to see more content on the Pixel 6 Pro, including my full one month review, which should be dropping in about two weeks time from now, then do me a huge favor, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because your support will go a long way in helping me out. Just a quick disclaimer before we dive right into it, the Pixel 6 Pro was sent over to me from Google, but in no way, shape or form is like an infant my honest thoughts on this device. I want to start off this review by saying the Google Pixel 6 Pro is the first phone in quite a long time that's actually lived up to the hype. We've all seen it before with devices like the OnePlus 9 Pro, the Pixel 5, the iPhone 12, and many more because these devices were severely hyped up prior to release. But at the end of the day, they sort of failed to deliver in one way or another. But not the Pixel 6 Pro, at least not in my experience. This year, Google came to play ball and they hit a home run. So I've been using the Pixel 6 Pro for the better part of two weeks now and I have a lot of thoughts. Never has a phone ever been so polarizing in terms of battery life. I've watched videos where people are saying they're only getting three hours of screen on time off a full charge and they have to charge their Pixel 6 Pro at least three times a day. I've also watched videos on the polar opposite end where people are saying they're getting around a days and a half worth of battery life and they swear this is the best battery device they've ever used. So what exactly is going on here? Who's lying? Who's telling the truth? So let's find out. I feel like a lot of factors come into play here. One of my good friends over on Twitter, Adam, brought up the fact that a lot of US reviewers use millimeter wave 5G. Here in Canada, millimeter wave 5G is not made available to us and it seems like a lot of US reviewers are getting much worse screen on times in comparison to reviewers outside of the US. It could also be due to the fact that a lot of early reviewers were on the beta version of Android 12 and the official Android 12 update didn't roll out until Pixel devices were officially released. That's why I think reviews that are coming out now are proclaiming battery life to be very very good. So the question is how's my experience been thus far with this 5003 milliamp hour battery cell? Just a quick backstory, I'm coming to the Pixel 6 Pro after daily driving the iPhone 13 mini. With the iPhone 13 mini, I'm able to get around 6 hours of screen on time on a 4G network. So anything over 6 hours these days, I consider to be exceptional battery life. With the Pixel 6 Pro, I'm able to get around 7.5 hours of screen on time on a good day, and on heavier days of usage, I'm still able to crank out around 6 hours of screen on time. Keep in mind though, this is all on a 4G network and not on 5G. If you use Wi-Fi more often than data, you'll probably be getting better screen on times than what I'm seeing. To really understand battery life, you have to consider my usage and keep in mind this is all on a 4G network with no Wi-Fi usage whatsoever. You have to keep in mind, Pixel devices are very smart. There's a critical battery feature called adaptive battery and through machine learning capabilities, the device learns to adapt to your usage patterns over time. So essentially over time, the phone learns to adapt the battery to your usage patterns, hence improving battery life. This whole process can take up to four to five days. So if you're having issues with your battery life early on and experiencing poor screen on times, just wait for adaptive battery to learn your usage patterns and kick in. A typical day in the life with the Pixel 6 Pro entails me waking up every day at 6.30 a.m. Scrolling through my Instagram and Twitter feed while on the toilet because hey, if we're being honest, who really doesn't do that these days? And then I'll proceed to play a few of my favorite tracks on Spotify while taking a shower. Then I'm out the door straight to the gym. But first, I gotta stop to grab a cup of Tim Hortons coffee and then I'm off straight to the gym. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. While at the gym, I use my Beat Studio Pros to listen to some more Spotify tracks while getting a workout in for about 90 minutes. At around 9 a.m., I head over to the local coffee shop and get started on replying to a ton of business emails, which usually takes me around an hour. But with Google's new and improved voice dictation, replying to emails with my voice is a breeze much faster than typing. I find myself saving about 15 minutes using the Pixel's voice dictation, and the thing is, voice dictation is so accurate. Doesn't matter if you're not properly enunciating or even slurring your speech. That's how good the improvement has been, just incredible stuff on Google's part. So after a tedious 45 minutes of replying to emails, I'm after work at the university. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. 
and while I'm at work, I'm usually not on my phone too much except when I'm on break. I do reply to a few WhatsApp group combos here and there, but for the most part, that's pretty much it. While on break, however, I'll watch a few YouTube videos from some of my favorite creators, catch up on reading my latest book on Kindle, and once break is over, I'm back to work once again. After work, the Pixel 6 Pro will usually be sitting around 45-55% to 55 battery health depending on the day, more than enough to complete the rest of my day without any battery anxiety. Call me crazy, but I'm super focused on losing weight and getting back into pre-pandemic shape, so naturally, I head back to the gym once again for another workout. While at the gym, I'll listen to a few of my favorite podcasts while getting in some much needed cardio, and after crushing my second workout of the day, I head on home for a well-deserved post-workout meal. Usually while I'm eating, I'll casually scroll through TikTok, and then after dinner, I'll play a few games of League of Legends Wild Rift with some of my closest friends. Surprisingly, the new Google chipset handles gaming really well, but more on Tensor's performance a bit later in the video. Around 9.30pm, the Pixel 6 Pro will be sitting at around 20%, more than enough battery life to cozy up in bed and watch a few more YouTube videos, troll the group chat, and then I'll call it a night by plugging in the 6 Pro 2's charger to repeat the same insane process once again the next day. Now, what I just showed you guys was just my typical day in the life breakdown on the Pixel 6 Pro. Of course, some days I use the device more heavier and there are other days where I won't use the phone as much. But nonetheless, battery life should not be a concern on the Pixel 6 Pro. If you were holding out on purchasing the Pixel 6 Pro due to poor battery life, I'm here to assure you guys you'll be more than satisfied with the screen on times. Quite honestly, it exceeded my battery expectations and I'm sure it will exceed yours as well. Google following the trend decided to not include a charging brick inside the box this year. Quite unfortunate I know, but it is what it is. The Google Pixel 6 Pro can fast charge at a speed of 30 watts. Not necessarily OnePlus or Xiaomi fast, but fast enough for me nonetheless. The Pixel 6 Pro does come with reverse wireless charging, perfect for topping up a pair of wireless earbuds while getting some work done in a local cafe. But not something I would rely on too often because the charging speeds for reverse wireless charging are just far too slow. Fun fact, if you have any Apple MagSafe accessories lying around, Around, you can literally attach them to the back of your Pixel 6 Pro and you know what the magnetic strength is actually pretty good. You can even attach bigger MagSafe accessories like this battery bank by Banks and now you have a portable MagSafe battery bank to carry on with you if you do face battery anxiety. The magnetic strength is actually pretty solid and it does charge your Pixel 6 Pro wirelessly so if you guys do want to pick up this battery bank I'll leave a link for you guys in the description below. I think what turned a lot of heads this year was the pricing of this device. The Google Pixel 6 Pro starts at $899 and for that price you are getting a lot of Pixel Magic in a Google designed flagship device. The pricing of this device should give Apple, Samsung, and OnePlus something to worry about. $899 undercuts the cost of some of the top phones in the market, and recent reports are suggesting the demand for the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro is six times what Google anticipated. And you know what? Google is not lying because orders of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro are backlogged all the way till December. So, yeah, this is a heavily coveted device, and I feel like the pricing at $899 has a lot to do with that. It's honestly about time flagship chips became a lot more affordable and Google is paving the path in that department. Let's talk about design for a little bit. This is a very unorthodox design to say the least, but to me it screams Pixel and I honestly love it. From afar, a tech enthusiast will easily be able to distinguish the Pixel 6 Pro from other devices. It quite honestly looks like a device that's designed for tech nerds. This is the sort of sunny color and it's sort of growing on me. The frame of the device is thinner along the side rails and thicker where it forms the top and bottom edges. Google claims all glass found on this phone is Gorilla Glass Victus, the best possible glass available to date. I love the quad tone look we have going on here. There's a different shade of yellow below the camera module and sort of like an orange shade above the camera module, followed by nice aluminum rails encompassing the device. A lot of attention went into the little details of this device and I honestly love every aspect of it. The Pixel 6 Pro is rated IP68 for protection against dust and water, meaning that it can be submerged underwater for 30 minutes in about 5 feet of water. This camera module is very unique. And to me, this and I have to say the S21 Ultra are one of my favorite looking Android devices in quite a long time, so Google nailed the design. Something I'm not too fond of is the button layout. The power button and the volume markers are both found on the right side of the device, and if you're coming to the 6 Pro from an iPhone, you'll find the button placement very awkward at first. It does take a tad bit to get used to, but once you get that muscle memory down, you'll be quite alright. Other than that though, I have to say I have no real complaints when it comes to the design. It's a solid, well-built device that actually feels like a premium flagship in your hands. Not to mention the Pixel 6 Pro is easier to handle compared to other big devices and it doesn't feel heavy in the hands despite housing a massive 5003 mAh battery. The Pixel 6 Pro comes in at 210 grams which is approximately 13% lighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But definitely do pick up a case for the Pixel 6 Pro because this is one slippery phone. I highly recommend the case. I'll link a few good ones I recommend in the description below. The Pixel 6 Pro is equipped with a 
6.7 inch OLED panel coming in at 1440p. This is a 120Hz refresh rate display, the colors are accurate, the display is vivid and bright, and I love the way Android 12 looks on this device. Outdoor visibility is solid and Google offers three different color profiles for the display. You can choose to go with a natural look for your display, or you can boost the contrast and the saturation of your display, or you can even choose to go with an adaptive color profile, which means you'll always get a nice clean white look to your display no matter what lighting conditions you're in. And so far it's done a terrific job of adapting the display to various lighting conditions. The adaptive 120Hz refresh rate on this display is excellent. I haven't experienced any janky or stuttery behavior, it's smooth scrolling all throughout. Even social media apps like Twitter and Instagram are a pleasure to scroll through. We do have a centered hole punch cutout for the selfie camera and the display is ever so slightly curved on the sides, but it doesn't get in the way of anything like other curved displays I've used in the past. This year Google opted to go with an in-display fingerprint scanner as opposed to a physical fingerprint reader on the back. My personal preference has always been a rear fingerprint reader, but this is a flagship and Google wanted to play the part. I have had no issues with this fingerprint reader. I find it to be fast and reliable, it works flawlessly for me every time I need to unlock my device, and it even works when my fingers are wet. Keep in mind though, your experience may differ if you do choose to use a screen protector on your device. There were a lot of reports coming out that the fingerprint sensor on the 6 Pro was slow and inaccurate, especially when using a screen protector, but there is a solution to this that was brought to light by Zach Talk Text over on Twitter. If you go into settings and then display and scroll all the way down, you'll notice a toggle that allows you to increase touch sensitivity when using a screen protector. Once you toggle this option on, you'll experience a much better fingerprint sensor that works rather well about 90% of the time. So a major shout out to Zach for bringing this to light. Surprisingly, the dual stereo speakers on the Pixel 6 Pro are legit, almost comparable to the speakers found on the iPhone 13 Pro. The bi-directional sound is formed when the earpiece and the downward firing speakers are working together and they sound really good. The speakers I find get nice and loud and they are also clear throughout the volume range. I was able to fill a mid-sized room like the one I'm in right now with plenty of sound without any crackling and distortion of any sort. Here is a speaker comparison for you guys alongside the iPhone 13 Pro. Tell me which one you guys think sounds better at max volume. I gotta say, the haptics on this device are awesome. You get that solid tactile feedback that isn't too aggressive. The haptics on this phone feel very well balanced and refined. I would go as far as saying the haptics on the 6 Pro rival the haptic feedback you get on the iPhone 13. So a great job on Google's part to fine tune the haptics and make it feel like you are daily driving a Google flagship. Now, when it came to performance, I really didn't know what to expect. This is Google's first attempt at creating a processor for their lineup of Pixel devices. I knew that the phone would be powerful and fast, but I did not expect this on Google's first attempt. Google Tensor combined with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 120 hertz absolutely flies and it's a different feeling from other Android devices because of just how well refined the Pixel experience is. Quite honestly, stock Android is just so smooth and so well optimized for performance. With Google Tensor, there are no performance issues, no strange hiccups, but I did notice a bit of overheating while gaming for over 20 minutes. The phone does get rather hot, so something I'll definitely be keeping an eye on. Multitasking is terrific on the Pixel 6 Pro, it does a great job of keeping apps open in memory, and gaming on the 6 Pro is a pleasant experience despite some overheating. I haven't noticed any stuttering or frame drops while gaming, so quite impressive on Google's part. Sure, in benchmark testing, this isn't the most powerful chipset found on a smartphone, but Google, I would say, is well on their way to competing with Apple Silicon, and I believe in three years time, I can see Google Silicon becoming a force for Apple to take seriously as a competitor. We can finally make our way over to the cameras. This year is an exciting one because we finally have new camera hardware to keep up with Google's processing software. The Pixel 6 Pro comes with a main 50 megapixel lens at f1.9, a 12 megapixel 112 degree field of view ultra wide at f2.2, and a 48 megapixel 4x telephoto at f3.5. Remember back when Pixel devices were once the king of smartphone photography? Well, Google is back to reclaim the throne. This primary lens is the best lens I've ever seen on a smartphone to date. The other lenses are not so great, I would even go as far as saying they're pretty subpar, but the main shooter is legit. 
get. It's the best even when compared to the iPhone 13 Pro. These images still maintain that signature pixel look we've all come to love and expect. The dynamic range is fantastic, the highlights and the shadows are accurate to the T, and the depth of view thanks to the lower aperture and Google's machine learning is flawless. A majority of the time, iPhones are praised for being natural and true to the scene. But in my testing and in this comparison, the Pixel 6 Pro is always more accurate to the scene, with more sharpness and depth to these images than the iPhone 13 Pro. Portraits are amazing on the Pixel 6 Pro. I love the way the bokeh looks in these images. These are portraits captured in an indoor setting with very low light and these pictures look bright, vivid, and very sharp with just the right amount of bokeh blur. I love using this phone to take portraits. It's always going to be in my pocket till something better comes along. I've noticed post-snap processing takes at least two or three seconds. Now this could be related to the Tensor chipset, but the images the primary sensor is able to capture is always true to the scene. And I prefer images the main camera is able to capture over the iPhone 13 Pro. Now the ultra wide lens is all right. It's not the best in class. The iPhone 13 Pro definitely does it better. There is no autofocus available. The field of view isn't nearly as wide as I would have liked it. You are able to capture some decent images, but sometimes the colors are off from the natural scene and I'm noticing a bit of distortion along the edges. Overall though, I would say the iPhone 13 Pro does it better when it comes to the ultra wide comparison. The 4X telephoto I would say is pretty good. I tend to use the telephoto lens a lot more than an ultra wide angle lens and for the most part these images are decent. It's good enough for most people but sometimes the colors are off compared to the actual images in real life. The sharpness is there in these images and the details are fairly good. On screen controls allow you to jump from 0.7x to 1x to 2x and 4x and you can however pinch to digitally zoom all the way up to 20x. These images even at 20x are actually quite usable and overall I would say for the versatility the telephoto is actually quite impressive. Honestly I'm just glad for the first time ever a pixel device now comes with a telephoto and an ultra wide. Just having that versatility available to us on a flagship pixel device is nice to see. If you're wondering about the selfie camera it's actually quite good. It does a great job of representing darker skin tones compared to other devices. The selfie camera is also able to shoot in 4k at 30 fps and this is the kind of quality you can expect. So this is what the selfie camera looks like on the Pixel 6 Pro. We are shooting at 4K 30fps right now and quite honestly it's not that bad at all. It actually looks really good. Uh, I am inside my car right now as you guys can see and the sky is nice and blue with the tinted windows up there. So everything just looks really really good. Um, I think it captures the light really well. So yeah overall I would say the selfie camera on the Pixel 6 Pro shooting at 4k 30fps is rather good. When it comes to low light and nighttime photography, the Pixel 6 Pro once again is the best in class. Google's AI does a great job of processing the scene, doing its best to maintain the detail, the highlights and the shadows once again. In all of these night photos, the Pixel 6 Pro in my opinion takes a better shot and does a better job of processing the scene in comparison to the iPhone 13 Pro. I have had high expectations for Google this year when it came to video. I figured with the new camera hardware, video quality would rival that of the iPhone 13 Pro. But in my testing, the video quality isn't all that great. Yes, you can record in 4K, but the autofocus sometimes struggles to keep objects in focus. The OIS is great, probably the best I've ever seen on a smartphone, but the quality of videos is nowhere near the quality you can expect from iPhones. With the iPhone 13 Pro, I can confidently use the footage in my YouTube videos and very few people will be able to tell it's coming from a phone. Quite honestly, a lot of work can be done on Google's part to improve the video department, so I am kind of disappointed. This year we have some new cool camera features like motion photo and magic eraser. Motion photos I would say are kind of a hit or miss. When you're able to nail the shot, you can get a nice image with the background all blurred out with some cool streaks. It's kind of a gimmick that I don't see myself using more than a few times, but it is fun to play around with once in a while. Magic eraser on the other hand is a very useful tool to have at your disposal. Of course all of this can be done better on Photoshop, but just having something as powerful as this on a smartphone is quite impressive. Magic eraser does a surprisingly good job at erasing objects that aren't too big. But for bigger objects I found it doesn't do that great of a job. So you might just be better off using Photoshop on some of these shots. Overall though I think the Google Pixel 6 Pro has a fantastic camera. It's a camera that slightly edges out the competition in my opinion. Specifically the main camera when it comes to point and shoot. I prefer images coming out of the Pixel 6 Pro's main sensor in comparison to the iPhone 13 Pro and the S21 Ultra. I know that not everyone might agree with me but I feel like Google did a fantastic job this year considering that they are using a brand new processor which by all means seems to be well optimized for the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro so good job on Google's part. In conclusion I would say the Pixel 6 Pro is a fantastic buy. It's the Android device I've been waiting for Google to make for quite some time now and they finally delivered. Pixel devices are unique. They have some cool pixel only features like screening unwanted calls and 
now playing to identify a track being played at a local restaurant or a cafe. Android 12 is simple, it's clean, and more importantly, it's super fun to use. There's something called Material U this year, and what it does is it automatically matches icons, widgets, system UI elements, and some apps to your wallpaper. There's no need to customize it yourself, Android 12 does it all for you, so quite cool in that aspect. Also, another fun fact, the script for this entire video was not typed up on a laptop. Instead, I used the Pixel's voice dictation to write out this script entirely, and it took me half the time as a would typing. Voice dictation is flawless and it works so, so well. I want this same Pixel software feature being implemented in apps like Notion and Microsoft Word. Now that would be really cool to see. The Pixel 6 Pro is as close to perfect as it can get. Google has never quite managed to deliver a pure winner with its Pixel lineup. Each iteration suffered some small issue holding it back. With the Pixel 6 Pro, I would say Google has delivered. Sure, Android 12 has some bugs to iron out, but overall though, with three years of software updates, a killer camera, great battery life, flagship feeling design, and fluid Pixel software, I would say the Pixel 6 Pro is one of the best flagships currently available on the market. Especially when you consider it's a very low price tag, this phone is very hard to beat. That has been it for me guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, drop a like on this video and of course subscribe to the channel. And as always, don't forget to flex with your stock Android tech.